artist and an illustrator. I absolutely love drawing flowers and animals and plants. Basically all of my inspiration comes from the natural world. So today I'm going to take you through a painting with acrylics on one of these little canvases here. Because it's such a small surface area, it should only take about 20 or 25 minutes. When you're starting to paint with acrylics, it's really important to have um, either a canvas or a really kind of thick textured paper to work on, just so the paint sits on it uh, nice and it doesn't soak through into the material. It's also a really good idea to have a, a, a whole variety of different brushes. So when painting with acrylics, I actually like to have um, sort of squarer brushes. Uh, a bit broader than, uh, than thin ones. And when you're painting with your acrylics, there are a couple of properties um, that are quite good to consider. So they're very easy to blend acrylics and you get really good vibrant pigments with them. You don't need to use water, so it's not like watercolours at all. Um, and also they're very fast drying. Always good to have some water on hand just to clean your brushes and one of these mixing palettes. Important that it's white as well, so you get to understand exactly how your colours are going to look on the canvas. And today I'm going to be painting uh, an orange, <laughs> a satsuma really. Um, so I chose this because obviously we have such a small surface area with the canvas um, that I needed a really simple design um, to not overcomplicate this small space. Um, but also within the orange, um, I can see that there are so many different colours. I mean, it's not just orange. Um, where it's darker, I can see sort of a lovely kind of red, a sort of fiery red um, hints of green as well and then where it's catching the light it's almost a pure white so for me that's a really good challenge to get all of those different shades in this one painting so we've got all our things let's get ready to go so we're going to begin with uh, a pencil actually and what I'm going to do is just mark out the area of the little orange on this canvas just so I know where everything is I'm using very, very faint lines because I don't want to be able to see the pencil through the paint. It's very lightly marked out now, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so we'll begin to mix the paints. What I'm going to do is put each singular uh, paint into each part of that palette. Just so it's easier for them to keep separate um, and cleaner for mixing. Uh, be mindful of how many, uh, how much paint you put out. Obviously, we'll be using quite a lot of yellows, reds, whites, um, but colours that you're not going to use very much of. Don't go too wild because you want to save your paint. So you can see how it's everything's at one end. It gives me a lot more space for uh, mixing the colours. So, I take my first paintbrush and take a really good long look at what it is that you're painting. So as I was saying, often with the, the colours, um, there are more than what there are many, many different shades of orange, yellow, red in this in this fruit. Um, so what you want to do is take a really good long hard look and just kind of pick out all of those different tones um, before you start. Um, obviously, orange is the main colour of my orange, so what I'm gonna do is mix up a um, a very pure orange. So I'm, all I'm gonna use is just the yellow and one of the reds. If you're not entirely sure of uh, how to mix colours, it's always good to have a colour chart, uh, a colour wheel on, on hand, just so you can understand um, you know, the complementary colours, but also what to mix in order to get which colour. It's really helpful at the beginning. I also always have a piece of paper um, that I'm going to test my paints on, um, just so I know what colour they are um, before I, I apply them to my canvas. I'm going to start um, with the darkest part of the orange. And don't worry if you can see a lot of the canvas and, uh, through the paint at the beginning. We're going to be building up lots of layers, so, so don't worry if it looks a bit watery. And again, what I'm doing is using my brush uh, in the sort of the same sort of circular direction as the orange is as well. Now I'm going to give my brush, brush a big clean and a little wipe down. It's really important when you're mixing colours not to have other colours on your brush, kind of it makes your colours really muddy. It's better to keep everything separate and very clean. Now I'm going to mix up a, a yellow. So I don't necessarily want it to be pure yellow, I'm going to put a tiny bit of white and so now I'm going to pick out the lighter areas of the orange and start to kind of blend on the canvas a little bit. Don't worry if you're if you're not 
sure or, or anything or if you kind of do a wrong mark or a wrong colour, acrylic is very very forgiving so you can just paint over it so don't worry. Approach it with confidence. There you go, you can see so far I've got quite a nice blend between the orange and the yellow. And now I'm going to start to work in with a bit of red, so we've got lots of lovely kind of fiery tones. Again, give your brush a nice wash before you do it. So where the uh, orange is quite dark, it, it sort of turns quite red, so what I'm going to do is just work again into those darker areas, just applying my paint over in that motion that mirrors the shape of the orange. Always keep looking back at your subject matter. Don't get so absorbed in your painting that you are not looking. With anything observational, they say with, uh, you should look for 90% of the time and work for just 10%. So the looking is essential to getting everything, uh, all the colours in the right place. Okay, so I think we need to do a little bit more orange here. And I think I want a more orangey orange this time, so I'm going to, I've used up my yellow already, I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow in and then a nice bit of red. And you can always refer back to the orange, if it's a little bit off, add a bit more yellow or more red just to make it the colour that you want. So and as, as the paint is drying now, I can see um, my brush strokes um, kind of going over and blending with those colours underneath and it's quite satisfying. So it's just a little bit tricky where the, that little green bit is on the orange so you can switch to a, a thinner brush or what I've got here is a very kind of pointy end where you can see the brush is quite thin so I'm using that. It's such a small canvas that you need small brushes really. So now the basics the sort of basic shape, the basic shades of this orange are, is, is kind of done. Um, what I'm going to do now is wait for that to dry so I can work into a bit more. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to um, put a background in. And so I've chosen a sort of lovely greeny blue, which is absolutely the right complementary colour for kind of yellows and oranges. Um, and you'll see there's when those two colours are next to each other, they really like pop and fizz and look fantastic, really eye-catching. And what I'm going to do is just uh, use this very sort of um, sort of thin edge of the brush just to get a really kind of tight line all around my orange. What I'm going to do is make sure that my canvas is painted all the way down the side. Some people don't do this, but I'm quite a fan of a canvas painted all the way around. So you can just see how nice those colours look together. So now, hopefully, in that short space of time, um, the oranges and yellows on my orange uh, should be a little drier now. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to work into it with a few more kind of unusual colours. So I'm going to use a pure white to pick out the highlights, um, but also I'm going to add a little bit of the green that I can see in the orange as well, just by, I think, where it's ripening up. I'm also going to take a very small brush and just um, put in the, the little green um, top of the orange where it was connected to the plant. See that little bit there? It's starting to look like an orange now. Where that, that little uh, green bit is, the, the orange kind of goes in a little bit. So what I want to do is build up a little bit of shadow around it. So I'm going to go back to my orange. Maybe make it even a little darker, perhaps, a little redder. And then I'm going to work into the, the colours of the orange slightly as well, just before I add that green. I just want to make sure I can't see any of the canvas underneath. And something that's quite nice is actually when your brush is a little bit dry and you can sort of drag it across the dried paint and you get to see both of the colours at the same time. So I often use my brush, brush dry at the very end just to kind of get a lovely textural marks on there. And then what I'm going to do is start with a pure white and just start to, again, a little bit drier, not very much paint on the brush, and just to pick out those highlights. So generally your highlights would be on the opposite side to your shadows. Can you see how my uh, the white is just sitting on top of those other paints um, and that's using quite a dry brush. 
I think when you do add the highlights, it really does just make the painting sing. It really adds a sense of, you know, three dimensional three dimensionality to the to the painting. I'm just going to add that little bit of green. I feel like that little bit of green needs just a tiny bit more definition. So what I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit of dark brown in that. Just the tiniest bit. So the last thing I'm going to do is work into that background a little more. So where you've got highlights, you'll also have shadows. And we want to just work into the background just to show that this um, orange has weight and gravity and that's where the shadow comes in. So I'm just going to add a slightly bluer version of that green in the background just to get where that... I think that's about done. Can you see how I added the, uh, the blue in that, that bottom corner there just to, to show the depth and the weight of the orange? Um, these little canvases, I think they also come with these little easels that you can pop them on. A real miniature painting. Well, I think they're really fun and they're also lovely to give as gifts just in that small size. They don't take long and are just something lovely to do. Uh, a bit of creativity for yourself, a bit of time for your uh, headspace um, and a nice exploration into the world of colour. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll go and wash my hands now. <laughs> take care. Bye bye.